Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today I'm going to talk about excessive geometry. So we've talked about this in the past. Specifically, we looked at like architectural models, and the example I always give is the kitchen model with a bowl of fruit on the counter. And it's there for a render, and when it's done, your bowl of fruit's like about this big on this full, full sheet spread. But that little bowl of fruit, the apple in there has more geometry than the entire rest of the kitchen. Uh, it happens all the time. I mean, sometimes we get heavy, heavy models, that, that kind of thing, entourage. But that's not what I'm talking about. I want to talk a little bit more specifically about the amount of detail you need in specific parts. So I'm not picking on Tyson. Tyson, a couple last week or two, did a couple of videos on modeling threads for 3D printing, and it was awesome. He modeled uh, nut and bolt. Uh, that could be 3D printed that would connect together. And it's a process doing the, the whirl and the, the material. It, it's, it's really cool when you get it. It looks good. Uh, if it, you're printing it, it's important that it be accurate so it works together. Um, but I'm gonna say that in a lot of models, even models where we're showing how something is assembled with a nut and a bolt or a screw, that ends up being extra information that you don't really need. And we're gonna talk about how you can get away without it right now. All right, so again, no disrespect to Tyson or his amazing uh, nut and bolt that he created, but uh, let's, let's take a look at this. Now, if the thing you're doing is showing a nut and a bolt and how they work together, then yeah, this level of detail, so you can see I'm just, just backing out the nuts. You can see inside there, I got the, the threads in there, the threads all the way up uh, this thing. This makes sense, right? Because this is this is if this is the hero, this is the thing I'm showing. Then it makes sense to have this level of detail. If I was doing something like this, where I was showing a cutaway of how a bolt works inside of a nut, and then I'd want to make sure I have my staggered, my my angled pieces have all this line up. Yeah, this is the perfect example of how to use SketchUp to illustrate something that you can't necessarily easily see. This is perfect for this. This is the hero of the model. This should be seen this way, but I mean, let, let's just take a look. If I double click into this one piece and I select it, it's gonna tell me that I have, you know, 2,500 edges and faces in this, just for this one little piece. So if that's what the model is, that's great. If this is a 3D print for a practical part that's actually gonna be used, awesome, go for it. Now I'm gonna challenge that and say, a lot of people use this have to get nuts and bolts into stuff that doesn't need this level of detail and this level of detail is going to end up weighing this thing down. So I'm going to propose some alternatives. So here, right here, this is simple, really simple. This is like scary simple. This is just a circle push pulled through the nut head and the bolt, the bolt head and the nut shape. And that's it. So if I double click in here, and I select all this, look at this less than a tenth of the geometry that's in this one over here. And again, depending on what you're using for, obviously if I was trying to illustrate how, how the, the threads of a bolt work through a nut, this wouldn't work. But if this little, little thing was down here in the corner of a mechanical drawing or something like that, more than enough detail, right? So uh, we talk a lot about modeling the appropriate level of detail, and this is an example of that. This might work for a lot of cases and keep your model so much lighter. Again. One tenth, that's that's a good saving. But if you had 200 of these across a model, then it would start to make sense. It would start to make sense to have, uh, you know, this this level of detail here. So if that's not enough detail, you could go something more like this. So with this, I have these kind of just undulating pattern in and out. They don't turn, so they're not actually threads. They're not. They don't follow a spiral down. They are straight ahead. But look look at this. Look at this. When I select this, 12 nice So this is half the geometry that I have when I actually angle them like real threads. And here's how that happens. So when I look at it here, each side, each, the 24 sided circle, each one's gonna have a, a plane that goes in, out, in, out like that, all the way down. If we look over here at the actual, the realistic one, it's all broken in half, right? Cause, Cause it has to follow this spiral pattern. Every one of those, what's just a rectangle over here has to get broken into two different uh, triangles. So makes sense, twice the geometry. The other thing to think about is this nut right here. So we look at this nut, 
that's 10,000 over 10, I'm sorry, over 1,000 additional faces. If this bolt or this bolt goes through the nut, then the nut doesn't actually need to have any, unless I see this nut laying on the ground, I need to see the threads inside. Having this be a solid face is going to be a huge saver of geometry. I don't have to model those inside threads if they're never actually seen. So something to consider there is don't model geometry that you don't have to see because even though it doesn't get drawn to the screen, it's not necessarily going to going to slow down how quick your your you know your screen is moving. It's still saved in, so it has to load that geometry in every time you save or open the model. All right, so let's talk about practically applying this. So right here, I have this block with these four plates in here, and they're all bolted in. Now. Some of these bolts have threads, some of them are just rods, some of them are just heads. Can you tell which are which? Let me cut you off. No, you can't. You can't tell. Don't pretend. Don't fake it. Once it's all put in here, all that matters is the head. All that matters is that I'm, I'm telling it there's a thread right here, or a head right here of a bolt. And that's all that matters. So when you get to this level, and I, I mention this specifically because I have actually seen models I've seen woodworking models with wood screws with the threads actually modeled put in so that all that was visible was the head. And I mean, hundreds of thousands of extra faces and edges in the model that didn't need to be there at all. So if you're modeling something that's connected and flush like this, don't bother with more than the head. And it was a trick actually, they're all just, they're just heads. So I didn't actually have any, they're all the same. None of these actually have threads on there because because I'm modeling with purpose and not extra geometry. So tricked you. No, moving on. So now there are situations where you might want to add to that. So this is a perfect example right here. So maybe my construction drawing is, or my assembly drawing is showing that this bolt that's called out is going to go into this hole through this plate. It makes sense to put some geometry in here. But again, I'm going to challenge you right here. This, this is that, that non- angling, uh, non, non real threaded, no whorls involved, uh, for the threads. These are just concentric threads. And you know what, for assembly drawing like this, this is half the geometry of that other piece. And it works just fine. Nobody's going to look at this and go, Oh, that's not how my bolt looks. It totally conveys information, saves you half the geometry and works just as well as the next piece in line. So again, this was not intended to shame anybody, especially Tyson. Thank you for the awesome video, Tyson. Thumbs up. Uh, this was just to keep at the top of your mind modeling for the level of detail you actually need. Now, it's possible you're doing just a fun model that you want to do and, and you're going to go through and your model to the nth degree. Super cool. Go for it. Do it. Do your thing. That's fine. If you want a performant model, especially something when you start building things like this, where they're, they're repeat over and over and over, bolt and bolt and bolt and screw and screw and screw, that geometry is sooner or later going to add up. And you may not have a performance hit, but you're going to have a big model sitting in your hard drive that takes a long time to open, or it is possible you'll have so many threads and so many pieces of geometry in there that it starts to do things like stutter when you, when you rotate or something like that. So think about it. Think about modeling the right level of detail and uh, like I said, this was just a couple of specific instances of how you can save detail by modifying the geometry as you, as you create it. If you like that video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week around here, and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. More importantly, they'll leave us a comment down below. Do you have some tricks for saving detail, saving geometry in your models? We'd love to hear them. Or if there's something specific you think we should show in one of our videos, let us know that too. We like making these videos a lot. We like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.